All right, so I want to make this very clear. The moment that I saw this, I I'm, I'm, I was excited. You know, the fact that his name is Church, um, the name of the song is called Church. And then he posts something that on uh, on YouTube. So a new video out now. This one might save a life. Please don't forget to share. Let's go. And, you know, it shows him kind of like, I would say, relieving some stress by putting his hands on his head. Um, hopefully this is a song that I've been wanting, you know, to hear. Uh, so hopefully he brings up a lot of stuff that bring, um, you know, obviously, I don't know if it has anything to do with church. Maybe it just has to do with religion, but I'm excited. You know, I really liked his other video, you know, the rock kind of themed. Uh, I'm the person that where I can listen to anything, hip hop, rap, techno, whatever it is, a little bit of country, uh, you know, not much, Keith, a little bit. And uh, I'm a fan of a lot of music, Church and Brandon Hart. And I've been listening to a little bit more of him. I hope this is what I think it is. I do hope. So let's get into this. Like always, intro. I need a short drink or a long prayer. I've been sober, but I don't care. I'm so scared of my own self. I get no help, and that's no fair. So don't go there. I've been hell and back. I got scorched hair in this Gucci cap. I got empty bottles and a million follows. I regret swallowing the Ativan. Yeah, let's be real. I resent the way that I feel. I pretend that it's cool, but I miss getting drunk, and I'm angry that God doesn't help when I kneel. Holy crap. So he's already down fast. Uh, the one thing that I would like to say right now is Paul speaks about this. In the Bible, he speaks about this. He says, I do the things that I don't want to do and I don't do the things that I want to do. Um, and I think a lot of, there's a lot of people that do that, okay? In other words, we are sinful beings. We are fleshly beings. We are driven by sin. We want to do things that are sinful. That's just our nature now because of the fallen world that we live in, okay? The moment that Adam ate that apple, not when Eve ate the apple, when Adam ate the apple, when Adam disobeyed God, sin entered the world. And because of that moment, from Adam till now, every single person has dealt with struggles. And when people like to say that they're alone, there's millions of us, there are millions of people that can relate to you. Uh, when he says, you know, I don't feel like God, I want to go back to here. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back to that. The way that I feel. I pretend that it's cool, but I miss getting drunk and I'm angry that God doesn't help when I kneel. So he makes it very, makes it a straight out point. Um, well, this is going to be like a long video, but I have to stop like this. Um, I think a lot of kids fall in that trap that they think it's cool somehow. Um, I fell into it a little bit. Uh, they think it's cool that you have to sag your pants. You have to smoke weed. You have to drink. You have to go to the bar. You have to break some laws to be cool and to be set, accepted into society. Uh, but I, I wish a lot of people would realize that that's not necessary. Uh, the fact that you're going to grow out of that when you get older. Many of my friends didn't and they got addicted to drugs. They got addicted to weed, alcohol, and then they actually came back to me when I was at the beach and I would put my Christian banners. I had a friend come over to me. He was a extreme alcoholic, tried to commit suicide sometimes. And he came over to me and said, if only I was hanging out with you, I wouldn't be in the situation that I was in. Okay. And he says, I tried, I, I thought those people cared about me, but they don't. And when he says, Tom McDonald says he, he, he doesn't, he, you know, he's going all through this and he doesn't feel like God answers him, even though he's on his knees and praying, people misinterpret this scriptures like crazy. People say, you know, when I uh, pray in his name and he will do it, you know, pray in my name and it'll be done. Scripture is very clear on this. Also, you are to pray in Christ's name, but also for his will to be done. And also need to realize that what you are asking for, if it does not glorify Christ in any way or will glorify Christ in the future, then why should he do it? If you're going to take it for a selfish purpose, why should he do it? That's it. I'm not saying that Tom McDonald's being selfish. I'm not saying Tom McDonald's not doing it for Christ or to show his glory, but I will tell you Tom McDonald's testimony of getting out of where he was before is a strong testimony. I said my prayers. When I got clean, it just got worse. I quit doing drugs and I pleaded with Jesus to save me, but he didn't hear my words. The don't work, it hurts. I went to church, now I need liquid courage. Whiskey in my glass, I take the knives out of my back to stir it. Go to hell and back again, then show you burns to prove I earned it. I need shots of God to gain the strength I need. I'm just a person. I wonder what kind of gospel was shared to him. I do wonder that. I do wonder what kind of gospel was to uh, told to him. Um, there's a lot of things that get told nowadays in this church now in, in America. The Americanized church, you could call it. It's the Americanized church where you feel good. Uh, the R word is not said anymore, which is repentance. 
the S word is not said anymore, which is sin. And we get told to give your life to Christ. And that's it. Um, I don't know what kind of gospel Tom was told, uh, but the first step of accepting Christ is repentance. Is acknowledging the sin that you were in and giving that up. It's a change in mind. And it's not that Christ is immediately going to do it. You have to take that first step and Christ will work with it. I had friends that were drug addicts, Las Vegas. He was high into that type of stuff. And he gave his life to Christ. Immediately, he knew what he had to do. He walked away from that lifestyle, turned away from it, stopped doing the drugs, stopped promoting it, accepted Christ, his will, and was saved. And he no longer desires that stuff. So my advice to you, Tom, is that if you're still dealing with this stuff, open up your Bible, read it. If you have alcohol in that refrigerator that is tempting you, get rid of it. Why keep temptation around if you're going to fall right back into it? In church, I hope you mean by community. You should not be alone on this journey. Anybody that's coming from addiction or anything of like drugs, pornography, um, alcohol, smoking, weed, uh, lust, anything, depression, anxiety. If you're doing this by yourself, you should not be doing this by yourself. The Bible is so clear when it comes to gathering as a body and admitting our sins to each other and the reason why is because we can all help each other so tom i would advise that is you find a true bible believing church a, a church that speaks about repentance who christ is what our nature is now don't ever avoid gathering in a body of people and confessing your sins I'm not talking about a priest. I don't believe in that stuff. I don't believe in priestly confessions. And you go to one person, you confess your sins. No, Christ means confess your sins to one another. Not one person, to one another. Reach out for help. There's many churches that offer help throughout the week. Try to find one. I keep talking to God, but he don't hear me. And my demons are there, always listening. I get lost in the dark, drowning in whiskey. And I went in so far, you say you miss me I'm on a ship in a bottle, so say goodbye at the shore Break the glass so you'll find me, I'm not who I was before Close my eyes in the darkness and hold on through the storm I'm a wreck in a bottle, I wasn't built for a war Um, one thing is, um, also when, when it comes to Brandon, you know And Tom McDonald and anybody who's going through whatever they're going through Is... Are you continuing to live in sin? Are you continuing to live in your addiction? Are you constantly, when you said, when he, when, when Brandon said, uh, you know, you know, demons are around. Well, obviously they are. The Bible says they come to seek, to kill, to seek, kill, and destroy. Okay. So I'm very happy he knows that. And he's aware of that. The Bible also says that Satan is like a lion. And he's circling around you, waiting for any moment to pounce at you. So anything that you're doing. That could lead back to anxiety, depression, suicide, alcohol, drugs, weed, pornography, lust, homosexuality, anything. And you can simply look up the, the, the acts of sin and flesh. Anything that you're doing that could give any doorway, I would say any doorway for Satan to leap through or go back into your life. You need to shut that doorway. Get rid of it completely. And like I said... If you have one bottle of alcohol in your refrigerator and that is tempting you, get rid of it. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eyes cause you to sin, pluck them out. Not literally, but it's a parable in a way. If you are sinning and something is in your life that's causing you to sin, get rid of it. Those church pews, bright lights, whiskey glasses, bottles of booze, make short days, to long nights. The bottle, the Bible, I didn't know what to choose. I pray on my way to the liquor store that they lock the door. Cause I lay in my grave and the whiskey pours like it did before. I'm scared. I send out a prayer. Can anybody hear me? Is anybody there? Cause honestly it hurts and every day is worse. I keep buying whiskey when all I need is church. Bible still with me
My eyes can't see from the bottles of whiskey. I don't believe anybody will miss me. You know, that's honestly what I thought. You know, obviously, um, a lot of stuff that I was going through, I, I was, I was, you know, contemplating suicide or anything, is that I always thought to myself, nobody will miss me. You know, who's really going to miss me? I haven't really done anything. If I left the church, no one will miss me. It'll just be another person who leaves. You know, I had those same thoughts. But honestly, I don't think people understand how important they are. And it might not just be to the whole congregation, your, all your friends. It might be one person. Because if you got one person to stop doing what they're doing, harming themselves, if you got one person to stop being an alcoholic and destroying their lives and build them up to be a better person, wouldn't it be worth it? See, if my life right now, if I had killed myself, what then? What if in the near future I would have saved one person's life, told someone the gospel, and they were saved? Be who God tended you to be. And I'm happy to hear that Tom McDonald, if this is true, is reading his Bible. But he needs more than just reading his Bible. He needs fellowship. And I'm on my knees. Tell me, God, are you listening? I pray on my way to the liquor store that they lock the door. Cause I'll lay in my grave if the whiskey pours like it did. All right, that was that. I want to talk a little bit more about that because I think it's really important that people get this down. Is is sin. A lot of people don't want the gospel to tell them what to do because they think that it's going to dictate what they can and can't do. You have free will. You can do whatever you want. The Bible is really just instructions. Basic instructions before leaving earth. A lot of the sins... And the commandments that Christ tells us to do are, I want to say, they're basically common sense. Be a good steward. Carry each other's burdens. Feed the hungry. Clothe the poor. Don't be selfish. Don't hold grudges. Don't have hate in your heart. If you sin, you fall into temptation, repent. Get rid of that sin in your life. A lot of people have in their mindset that, it's sad to say this, but a lot of people have in their mindset that, you know, they can pray and then it will immediately happen. Not always. It's not always the case. The majority of cases when that happens, you have to get up and do something. You have to be the one that takes the first step. But if you keep going back to that sin, what's the point? Cut it off. Walk away from it. It's a change in mind. That's what repentance means. A change in mind. It's either the Hebrew or the Greek word means a change in mind. And then the other one means to turn away and walk away. Is that what you're doing? Because when you're addicted, you're a slave. You're a slave to that product. You don't have control over your life. That product has control over you. And if you're constantly going back to that liquor store, and when he was saying he'd be driving to the liquor store, and the doors would be closed. Good. Good. I'm, I'm going to sound like a jerk, but I'm happy you couldn't get that liquor. I'm, ca I'm very happy you couldn't get that vodka, that booze, that beer. Get rid of it. I want the best for everybody. I see what alcohol has done. Not just two friends. But to my family, I see what it does to people on a daily basis, on holidays where families should be getting together. I see what addiction does. Even pornography. When you study pornography and what it does to your brain and how it declines thought process, your individuality, how it destroys your personality, how it destroys the trust in, in you and others, how it actually affects your family around you by just watching that. But there's some people that don't care. Sin will affect your life tremendously. Christ says that he wants us to live to the full. To the full extent of life. Not just for ourselves, but also to glorify God in anything that we do. That's why I do what I do. This is why I react to videos. Is to bring my perspective in it. To bring the gospel perspective into it. That's why I have a gaming channel. 
is to play games, get people to engage, and then put the gospel in it. And then they hear the gospel. I do Bible lessons online. I go to rallies. Everything that I do, everything that Tom McDonald should do, everything that Brandon does, everything that Nova does, should to be glorifying Christ. And let me tell you, it's a much better life. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe for more. Uh, comment down below. Comment down below uh, your story, maybe, if you'd be open to talk about that. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I'd be love to talk to you guys. I have a, I have a TikTok. I have a Twitter. I also have a Facebook. And uh, I have a Twitch. I'm all over. But comment down below what you guys would like to see next. What three verses in this song you would like to hear. And have me sit down and go over those three verses. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.